up people? It's me again, chemical engineering guy. I'm going to help you pass through the mass balance course. We're right now in the introduction and we are going to see the general mass balance approach to problem solving. What does that mean? We're going to do mass balances, you know it. Hopefully, if you don't have any idea of what I'm talking about, please go through the previous lessons and videos. Because if not, you're not going to have any idea and you will not understand this. So, in general, we're going to solve mass balances. So, this is the, like a methodology or just follow through idea you can use. So, you get easier and simpler processes to solve it. Number one. Of course, you need to read it first. That will be number one. Or number zero. You read it. You have a problem. Now, you have a problem. How do you do it? First of all, draw flows, streams, uh, equipment, units, everything you think it's important, draw it. And of course, label it because if you don't label, it's very difficult to relate variables in this block diagram, of course. Now, choose a convenient basis of calculation if not given. They tell you base it on a 100 kilograms per hour production of P, well, then use this as basis. You have nothing, use, I don't know, normally 100 kilo will be good because 100 gives you 100%, I don't know. You can use infinity amounts depending on the case and you will see a lot in the problems I show you, in the problems in the problem section, you will see a lot of basis of calculation, how to choose it and why. Now, tag all the variables in the diagram. Don't let any flow, concentration, temperature, pressure, uh, equipment go by. If you don't know this, like label it, please. Now, you have all the data, you have all the variables you need, and of course I tell you before, analyze the problem. You need to think before actually doing the equations. Think, what do you need, what do you uh, will require what are the equations can we solve it right now we need more data I need to look for densities I need to go internet and check uh, some stuff I don't know do your analysis of variables and equations and do a degree of freedom analysis which is essentially counting variables versus counting equations if it's solvable please continue Change all volume data to mass and mole because volume is not constant. We have no volume principle of uh, uh, how to say you cannot destroy and construct volume. You can produce it. We have not that. We have mass and mole. So please change all to mass and mole if you can. So when data is given, change all either to mass or mole. I will recommend to work with mass in certain cases. I would recommend to work with moles in certain cases. This will be in general where there is a reaction and with mass when there is no reaction. But that's me, guys. You can actually work with either of both. You will be converting a lot, yes. But if you feel you have a better chance with mass rather than mole, do it. And this is the most important one, I think, because Translate all text to equation, that's an art. You need to understand, you need to relate to say one half of F equals C. This will be read as one half of uh, the feed, or they will tell you like the product is one half of the feed. That is the art of translating words into equations. And you know why do we need equations? Because we need to look equations to get variables. So you will need that. Now, after all, you just do and write mass balance. Now that you know you can do it, I recommend you to write every mass balance. You probably know that you will not use one, as I tell you, n equations for n substance. But just do it for the sake of having everything perfect, everything written, every mass balance you will write, etc. Good tip is to order from number of variables to from from a little. For example, you have one, two to a question that has, I don't know, three, four. 
And finally, which is the best thing if you are good in math, just do the math. Solve all equations and variables. You will get all the variables and once you have all variables, you will have all the flows, all the compositions, etc. Now, 10 has more to do what you are requested to rather than what are you going to calculate. Be sure to scale up. Many times, many students just finish, they got these, like, oh, they solve the equations and variables, but they don't even know what they're asking. If they tell you the relationship between F and C, and you just calculated F and C, well, come on, guys, just do this division and you will get it. Because if not, it's okay, you got the data, but you didn't answer what I was asking, which was the relationship. Make sure also to scale up. If they tell you, okay, scale this process to 100 kilos, and the process was based, your basis of calculus was 1 kilo, well, it's so easy to multiply it by 100, just do it. This all depends according to the problem statements. So you gotta check, when you got all the data, go always check back what are you asked for and do an answer for it. So, have here one example, please read it, I recommend you. I'm going to make a pause as well, so you can read it. Now, a distillation column is being fed by a stream of 45% benzene. And the balance is two lengths, which is rapidly 55%. If you don't believe me, calculate it. The product D flow contains 95% of the benzene. This does not mean it's the, this is not composition. They are telling you the 95% of the of this benzene is in the product D. 8% of the fed of benzene is being produced in the bottoms. Okay, we have more data. If feed F flow is 2,000 kilograms per hour, determine the flow in D, the mass flow in benzene, and to loan in the bottoms. So technically they're asking everything. The flow in D and the flow in the bottoms, and not only that, they want to know how much benzene and to loan. So you need the compositions as well. So you gotta work a lot. I bring you this example, hopefully you understand it. It's number one, I told you before, draw and label. Draw your diagram, here I draw the stream entering, I have this data, I put it in, and I don't, I know it's 0.35. I could write this, it's easy, because why to do, why do you do this like a, as a complicated calculation when it is so easy? So write it. You have your unit operation block, which is the distillation. Yeah, you could use a tower, or whatever you want. You have this flow, which is the vapor ones, which is D, and you have this flow, which is the bottoms. You know this is 0.45 of benzene here. This is not composition, is 95% of the initial benzene. And I write generally notes that cannot be like introduced in the diagram. Look, note 1 is 8% of the benzene in 2, which I think is this. In feed is the equivalent to benzene in B. And note 2, I know that B times XB in benzene will give me the amount of total benzene that I am requested for to calculate. And B, which is bottom, times the molar composition or mass composition of toluene in bottoms, which is this one, will give you the toluene, which I am asked for. So good. Now it's time to choose a basis of calculation. Use the problem feed, why not? We could use 100 and we will need to divide and then at the end of the problem we will have also to multiply but why not use 200 from the beginning? Good. It's not that you have to but it will make it easy. Number 3, tag all variables. In F you get XBF, XTF. B means benzene and T means toluene. F means in F, D means in distillate, and B means in bottoms. So this is kind of tricky because it's mass fraction of benzene in bottoms. So this is tricky, guys. Put attention in this. Pay attention, please. And good, I just like circled this because these are variables that I invented myself. 
this is for letter B. They ask me the amount of benzene and toluene in this flow. Here, here they are. Now, number four, count all variables and equation before actually solving. So, I got three flows and six compositions, a total of nine. Good. I got two equations in the mass balance. I got five implicit equations, which is one four composition and one flow. I got one eight percent ratio equation that I can relate. And finally, I got one restriction in the composition. So thankfully, I got nine. Since the number of equations is the number of variables, I can solve it. So let's do it. Now, let's convert all volumetric flows, sorry about this, volumetric flows to mass flows and mole flows. So thanks God, in this problem we don't have nothing about that, so we don't need. Convert all data, mass, moles, uh, mol, mass flow, molar flow, to either mass or mole. We don't need it because everything is in mass. And number seven, let's translate, translate all the text to equations. So from note one, you know 8% is something. So we read 8% of the feed of benzene. So this is already benzene in the feed, benzene in feed. And they tell you that 8% of this benzene in the feed is the benzene going in the bottoms. This is benzene going in bottoms. So now again, I want to repeat it. This is benzene in the feed, or being fed. So that's why here is X and F, because to get the amount of benzene in F. But they tell you that only 8% goes to the bottom. So you got this new equation, which could be also the same as to say 92%. Also, the other percent goes to the destillate, wherever you want. Now, write mass balance equations. Mass balance in global and mass balance in one uh, species. You could do the other one, but they will only... Number three and four are the ones that are going to work for you. They're going to give you the values you're looking for. So simply from the balance, you know, you have this... You have inlet is F, outlet is T and B. So just solve it and you have this. Now, mass balance in benzene will be the same, just at the fraction here, fraction here and fraction here. Good. Now, do the math. You have everything to do, so just substitute. I substituted F here. Here goes F. You got this value, yes, in the destillate, so it's okay. And you know that this is what I'm asked for. And what else? Okay, another time. F, this data, you have it. So from here, just to let you know, we have this value too. It's here. And XBB is the thing I'm, I'm looking for. So actually this is, I think I use C. So we have three equations and three variables. I don't have D. I don't have B and I don't have BXBB. So let's continue. We can solve it. And from the this one is that one here. I'm solving and then I get D, which will be probably that one here. Oops, yeah. No, or right here. So we get D from D. We go to substitute this in number three, which is this one. It's very, very easy. 2000 equals this flow. Just find B and you find B. And from one, which is this one over here, you just need to substitute all the data that you have. You will get 72. But you're looking actually for XP. So 72 in the total gives you this percent. Nice. Now, we know we in the first one, later A, we are asked for the destillate. Destillate, we have it as a direct variable, good. And in the second one, we are asked for the benzene in the bottoms, which is XB, or the fraction of benzene, in the bottoms. We have both values, which is actually C. Go back. It's, uh, where is the value? 
XB is this one. Look how they relate. So we just answer the problem or solve it. The conclusion. If you follow the methodology I show you before, it helps. Of course you need to learn it, but it's also common sense, so don't worry. The difficult part I told you before is the assumption of equations, variables, data, how to relate them, and essentially that. Mass balance are easy if data is known. The more data you know, the easier it becomes. So if you need more exercise and problems about the mass balance with no reaction, mass balance of one unit with no reaction, or degree of freedom analysis, or whatever probably I have it there in my course, go to this web page, which will be available available. Go to the section of courses, choose mass balance course and go to the problem section. You will find the problem index there which probably you will like because you will choose I want to practice mass balance in no reaction. And you click it and you get them. So that was everything I was going to do in this video. Keep going because it's not over. We still have more to do. We are only like in the 30% of our class so just keep going. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.